Good morning. This is Judy Gula from Artistic Artifacts in Alexandria, Virginia. You can find us on the web. We are uh, there virtually with you at www.artisticartifacts.com. And we're live today and we're here with a conversation about a thread that I've actually been carrying since I started my business. It's called Tentaculum. And it's, um, you know, I thought there was this whole big thing about the name and it sounded Egyptian, Egyptian cotton, nice stitching, all that. Stuff. It's made up. So it was just a made up name. And um, I finally learned how to say it correctly, Tentaculum. And e, there's threads and all kinds of fabulous textiles, textures that are hand dyed in Germany. And they are a very unique 40 colors in probably, you know, a million different types of threads from pearl to rickrack to fabric. And they're just wonderfully dyed together. There's, we've now started carrying the fabrics that all here and they go to cocoons. They're, they always, I thought the colors had always been very saturated and recently there was, I guess in the last several years, a request for some lighter colors. So as you can see, those are added. And when you go on to our website and shop the product, it's gonna say pearl cotton. So within pearl cotton, it's gonna give you multiple sizes. Tentaculum has size three, which is big, I'll give you some examples in a minute, to size 12, which is smaller. So within that, it has 40 different colors for each size. So then there's another category or selection that might be for braided metallic number four, or braided metallic number eight, that you, know, you can go in. So it allows you to see all of the colors that are available. They are hand dyed, so this is our best representation. It might not exactly match the picture because of how they um, pull the packaging off of the pieces that are dyed, so you'll get some different varied colors and things. So just be aware that this is a very unique product and it is going to change over time. The dye lots are gonna be different and know that as you incorporate it into your work. So Tentaculum. It is an incredibly wide variety of products. So what we thought, because when I look at it, I get, I, you know, I've been able to add pieces as I go, but as you come in new now, it's like, well, where do I start? So what I did was I pulled a selection of everything that is Marianne. So fuchsia, I happen to like fuchsia. So this will show you, this is a new product for us. This is absolutely so, so fun. Lots of texture. You can stitch it down with a machine or by hand. And it is there. We have snail trim. This is hand dyed rayon covered um, with some silver. It only comes with silver metallic. And that is there too. Uh, as I mentioned, we now have the fabrics that have some lovely trim and wrapped these sizes. And you can see they're all gonna be different within that. We do have carry some ribbons. These are silk ribbons and we have two different sizes. And they, you can see the variation of the color there. So this is four millimeter and now I need my glasses, seven millimeter. So a lot of that is for ribbon embroidery. Those are the sizes that people want. Um, the packaging is starting to change. As you can see, we have them in these packages, but they're going to spools. So I, my understanding is everything's gonna get converted to these spools. So even the ribbons. Um, this is single loop trim. See, there's a single loop. This is a rayon coated. It's got a core inside and it's coated with rayon and rayon takes dye fabulously. So nice and nice and bright. 
This is called Cotton Ribbon Floss. And this is a very interesting product because it has some give in the way that it's woven. And you can scrunch it up, you can stitch it down. So it has a little bit of movement. It's kind of similar to like if you cut something on the bias in a fabric. So that has some stretch and availability. So this one's one of my favorites, ribbon floss. And then they do, we do have regular cotton floss, six strand cotton floss. So that's in there too. You can see the strands. I actually grew up using floss a whole, whole lot, but I, I don't use it too much now. This is GIMP. Let's see if I can get it out. I have a piece in my book. So this is again a cord that's rayon. It, it, this is really fun. There's some surprising, amazing things that you can do with it. And this is a braided metallic. That's in these spools. So, and the spools are gonna be like this now. So we're not gonna have a plastic cover. They're gonna just have a hang tag on them and the spools are gonna be presented like that. So we're definitely going through some hardcore uh, packaging changes right now. There is wool. So this is our cruel wool. Very, very soft. This has got a fabulous hand to it. Really, really beautiful. This is silk. So we do get asked about silk threads. This is the silk, only silk thread we have at this point. And it uh, takes the dye, absolutely gorgeous. And that's our silk. Um, this one is a shimmer blend. So see, this is shimmer blend also, I think. Yeah, shimmer blend in another color. But these, and this is a braided metallic. Can you see the difference between those? Um, this is a braided metallic number four. So four should be thicker than eight, but don't hold me to that one. Um, this is Rick Rack. It has little crystals on it. This is wonderful, very bright. I love the crystal look on it because it, it pops the rest of the color. So is the silk embroidery floss separate th threads that can be um, separated? Um, can the silk be separated? Seven strand silk floss is what our description is. But uh, let's see here. Yeah. Looks like yes, you can. Okay. Thank you. That was a great question. All right. Then we have pearl cotton. So this is gonna be a pearl number three. So that's gonna be the largest. This is gonna be a pearl number 12. That's small. Now, mind you, it's the opposite of the needles, but that's for a different day. So this is gonna be five. So you can see it's a little bit smaller. Can everybody see through the packaging or is it better if I open it up for you? just not gonna behave right. So, Good morning, Pat. <laughs> All right, so this is 12. This is nice and thin. This is eight, five, and three. So you can, and what the point of this whole little ribbon thing here 
is for you to see how they all interact together and how nicely they're dyed and, and work as a color. So if you pick Mary Ann in a cotton and then you wanna go to another product, a snail trim, a shimmer floss, you know they're all gonna work together. It's all gonna be similar colors that are gonna blend. Uh, and that's what the dyeing is. Now, that's the easy part, is picking one color in multiple different threads. But say you wanna use different colors. So the other thing that happens with Tentaculum is not only does it work within the same colorway, but if you pull colors out among this thing, okay, so this is Mark, this is Hopper, this is Gauguin. So you can see this is Kandinsky. That, to me, these all kind of work together. So if I was, so here's our shimmer floss. See how that's nice, it's not tightly woven. So all of these are work well together across the product line. Does that make sense? They're all the same tone, the same feel, the same intensity. That So regardless of whether you pick Hopper or Mark or Mary Ann, they, they all will work together. So I hope that makes sense. That's part of what I wanted you to understand. Um, here's this one too, braided metallic. And you know, we started with Hopper, which was highly gold. And then we went to throw some blue and some turquoise in there. Okay, <clears throat> so works very well. Uh, okay. One of the things I want to show you is another new product. Let's see, did they tape it? Yes, they taped it. Look at this box of fun. So at one point in time, we had these kind of packaged individually, so they've put it in a box and boxed it all together. We still have a few of the buttons this way and a few of the buttons this way. But my understanding is once we're out of stock on those and sell out of what we have, it's gone and then we're going to this box. But I think that this is just fabulously fun. All right, so any, are there any questions or what questions might you have about the different products? Are you, there's, there's unlimited possibilities. So we just wanna make sure you understand that that is what we're doing. And uh, here's another packaging thing that's happening, okay? So see this little guy here? She's taken it from the bag and put it into a box, so. That's one of the things they're working on. Stitching. Let's talk about stitching. I, when I started my business, I was very lucky to spend several years with Liz Kettle and Ruth Chandler. Um, those are hand stitching mavens. I learned an amazing amount of stuff as they became very, very close friends in helping me launch my business into the shows. And they would be at Houston with me for most of the time. They would be, they'd written books, they'd be there for wholesale and just really took my um, stitching from what I learned in high school and how I stitched my painter's pants, which I still have somewhere. They might fit a doll, but not me and they really brought it into what i feel more artistic way of using stitches so my number one must have book 
for stitching is Modern Hand Stitching by Ruth Chandler. Number one, you have to have this book. It should be in everybody's library. We have them on a regular basis and it is just a wonderful book. So what she's doing is showing you how to do a stitch and then the next part of it is what you can do to take that stitch beyond and make it a little more interesting, a little more creative, a little bit more yours. Wonderful photographs. And I must tell you, I have a quilt that is in the book. One of them is this, which is woodblock printed and a little bit of jelly print. And then I did stitch it with tentaculum thread. So you can see what I did with the gimp. This is the gimp. It's really fun and curly and movable. Um, this is a matte thread, painter's threads. Oh, I didn't have a sample of that one. Okay, so we'll have to try that. Um, and what size needle do you use with the gimp? That is great, and I'm gonna show you all my needles. So, yes. This is the needles that we use, our chenille. This is one of like the best things I ever learned from Ruth and Liz, is a chenille needle. Because they have needles in the store that say embroidery needles, but I can never get them threaded. So, um, let me, the, the gimp is really, it looks like it would be tricky, but it's very easy. Okay, so I would say that you're gonna be in a 20, size 20. Okay, so I knotted this all up. That was not very smart. And when you're stitching, you're gonna, you know, you don't use this piece that's more than 18 inches long. I'm gonna try and thread this on camera, so be kind. Um, here are all my needles. So an 18 is, is gonna have a big eye. And then um, this one, this is a 20. And this is a 22. So what's changing is the eye. So let's see, what did I pull out? Uh, okay, maybe we'll try that one. Um, fudge. Scissors. Where'd I put my scissors? Or my box. I think on some days I'd lose my head if it wasn't attached. This is going to be a little tight. Let's see. It's not an 18. Okay, so the other thing I learned is if it takes you too much to thread the needle, you have the wrong needle. If you pull too hard from, um, so like when, we, when you're stitching. So the eye gets smaller as the needle, as the number goes up? Let's just confirm that. Yes, that's my understanding. Yes, it does. All right, so here's 18s, which obviously I need some. So um, we have a pack that is chenille needles in many different sizes. Um, Ruth, tell me why I'm not getting my thread in here. You're not supposed to do that. That's a bad thing. All right, so we started with the hard one first. And I may have to leave this because I'm getting frustrated, which is not a good thing. All right, we'll come back to that in a minute. The 18 is supposed to work. Um. <laughs> threading in the best of time is stressful, but threading on live video <laughs> is like, very oh. stressful. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, Elizabeth. 
so this is going to be for this one this is a single loop so what I would do on this one is um, I would couch this down now the gimp can always be couched down but it can be stitched that's what I wanted to show you the the piece that I showed you that is in there is um, uh, couched but you can make some wonderful knots with this so I would just come over hmm, and I would couch it. Now, to make it even more interesting, you could change the color. So I wanted my color to not overwhelm my green that's there. But I could even do some stitching Let's see, I could make a cross out here, come back through here, and now I've, I've created a different pattern that I'm making up as we go. So now I've gone beyond the piece, and if I used a brighter thread, this would just be much more interesting. So, that gimp there. Yeah, that's, oh, there we go, Chris. Amen, yay. See, it will not. It can go through a needle. So this is gimp. So this is a straight stitch and a knot. So it did go through that and then comes down here as straight stitch. So it, it will knot very nicely. Not a real tight, tight knot, but you can do this stitching you can do some loose French knots with it. It's really, it's one of my favorite threads that works. Do we have, I don't think we have it any place else. So when you are in, this is from Modern Hand Stitching. So Ruth created a book, a fabric book, and this is going to show you some. Here's some more GIMP where I've couched it. This was done mostly with tentaculum. And in the modern hand stitching, it tells you how to do this. And it was really fun. And I can use it as an example, but I also can continue to stitch on it. Like in the book, it tells you to do this stitch on this space. Well, in this thread. Well, I changed it. I did that stitch, but I tried threads that were painter's thread, size 12, size 5, and I, I made it a little bit more. So um, you can make this book any way you want. This is Osnaberg on the back side with some flannel, and it works out wonderful. This is just some, I put a piece of silk roving, which we have from Treenway. We have silk roving in lots and lots of different colors. Just took a little bit to create some background and stitch over it. Is that These, a cocoon? That's a cocoon with some French knots. I found that French knots for me work better when I use a bigger thread. So I get a better French knot when I use a size three than when I use a size 12, because I want it to show up and know that it's a French knot. And she tells you how to make all of these little um, labels and things too. You ready for the other side? Mm -hmm. Here's my other side. So someone asked when you were stitching over, when you were doing this, mm -hmm. that you're not stitching all the way through the fabric, just the top layer. That's correct, I am. Um, and I am only going through the top layer. Most of the time, by the time I decide to stitch on something is usually I have my quilt fully assembled. So I have layers. Beading is a little tough not to go through the back but stitching, I can do that. I can just go through the top and the batting has a little more stabilizer. Now, if I have a plan before I start my project, which is very rare, is that I would prepare the fabric, and I think I talked about this in the beading YouTube, that I would use Misty Fuse, which is a very, very thin um, interfacing, and I would put it 
either on my, the, if this was my fabric, I would put it on here, and then maybe I would add Osnaburg. So I'd have three layers. I'd have Osnaburg or flannel, Misty Fuse, and then my finished project. And that gives you some body that's nice and soft rather than stiff to stitch through. So if I can do that, like if this piece was done by Sue Price. So here she's, she's got some machine stitching. She's got some ricing. I would guess that she would have produced this, printed the Thermofax screen printing. So the birds and the leaves, all of that is Thermofax printed, assembled it. And then she did these pieces to highlight them and added afterwards. And you can't see anything. So, ah, okay. So she did it as a front and a batting and then stitched it and then did a pillowcase cover. And then what you do, see she stitched all the way, this is a, this is a great thing to do. Stitch all the way around you do a slit in the back and turn it right side out. And then all you have to do is put your sleeve over this. Misty fuse it down, put your sleeve over that, and it's hidden. Sometimes I don't hide mine. Sometimes I put my tag or I put a funky piece of fabric that you find on the back. This is a wonderful, wonderful way to do some little small, small great quilts. So someone's <clears throat> asked about this thread book and we don't sell the thread book, but we sell the Osnaberg and the, the instructions are in, in Ruth's book. book. Yes. yes, yes, that is correct. So we have Osnaberg or, and that, and then the Misty Fuse and, and the book, isn't it? And the instructions are, are pretty reasonable. So what you're doing is stitching this open. So this is a piece that I it took it a, and stitched it together, but it, with a machine when I was finished. But when I was working on it, it was open. So you, you're flat. It's, it, that was pretty nice. Would the um, Essex work for this yes, project? Yes, Essex would work. Yes, that's a great suggestion. That's a, a lighter weave. Not You don't want something really tight. You want something that's going to let you needle through it. The other thing that's part of stitching is that you want things to feel good. You want it to feel soft, you want it to feel fat good, because that's part of the process is enjoying your threads and your stitches. So that I think is, is important. Some of you are aware of stitch meditations that uh, we have a Facebook group, Liz Kettle runs that. And she has also got a website that, uh, that's called Textile Evolution. So a lot, a lot of stitching for the sake of stitching is what stitch meditations are. She's got a video and everything. It's really, again, very interesting and it has grown and become all kinds of, of different things. Okay. Oh. So somebody wants to know if we sell this uh, book. Um. Okay. So this was, um, I don't know, Liz and I did this a while ago. So what this is, is it is from a fishing company. So you can see there's the fishing logo. It, there's lots of outdoor places. And I guess this is, was for fly fishing. So that you put the fly fishing things in here. So you can get extra pages. So, and I, I was doing this last night. I'm like, well, how do I divide it? Do I divide it by thread or do I divide it by color? So I did it by thread. So like these, this is here. And you can tell, it, this plastic is not looking that great. Um, I have shimmer floss. I have some wool, a few little... It's called a worm stuff. bag. A worm bag? Oh. <laughs> Ooh, dead or alive worms. <laughs> but that's what this is. So what we did was we painted it. And I think it was black, is what I assume. So you would want to gesso it first, because I don't think we gessoed it, and it's and it kind of absorbs some of the color, and it looked a little darker. So this is uh, I would gesso it. We used our textile artistic artifacts textile paint. I had some pieces of fabric paper. 
So there's some fabric in here, and you can tell I take this everywhere with me, and it's it's getting a little mutilated. There's some um, leaf shapes in here. I have two of them. A little bit of trim. We stitched right through the baby. And it has a Velcro closure. So this has worked out really, really well. I, I can just like throw stuff in there and close it and know that I'm gonna get home with it. <laughs> I might not be able to find it later, but it'll be there. So um, let's show you this one. This is uh, some great stitching. Julie Booth does wonderful stitch work with some great fabrics. And this is with a buttonhole. Wonderful, very uses lots of ethnic great fabrics. And just does an amazing, there's some hand dyed pieces I'm sure she got here. She's taught from uh, with us in the past, um, pre-COVID. She does some, uh, I do think she does have some things on Zoom going. Um, Wonderful blog. This shows with the tentaculum how much fun it is because this is one strand and it shows all the variations. So like with your stitches come out with each stitch is a, a revelation because it's gonna be a different color. Haven't you been known to pull a thread out and cut the color you want, Chris? Me? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes, mine wouldn't be organized because <laughs> mine is strictly by color. Yeah, so that's a great one too that she did. Now, let me show you a couple of these things that we have, and if they're both by Chris and myself. So we really love these basic gray pieces. They're, they allow you a shape and allows you to personalize them to using this fabric. You can machine, you can hand, and this is a panel from a piece of fabric that I can remember when Chris saw it in the store, and she's like, oh, I have to hand stitch that, I have to hand that stitch that. So you can see here, and there's some here, and then look at her French knots. She likes to do French knots in size 12. Um, here, some thread there. So these are absolutely great. Now you can hand stitch them or you can machine stitch them. You can do them, personalize them. There's all kinds of size. The hardware is in it. It's easy to assemble and the instructions are fabulous. They are designed by our friend in Australia, Jennifer. This was a piece that I did, um, maybe this was the start of my owl fantasy. It actually was a sample that I had in a, I was woodblock printing at a show. And it ended up in National Parks by uh, Donna. And this is some cocoon that I ripped off, some shimmer floss. You can see the difference. The woodblocks are really lend themselves nicely to working with hand stitching. Machine stitching works as well too, but we're focusing on hand stitching today. And then these are some other pieces by Chris. And Chris has a wonderful Shopify store if you're looking for a great gift. So this is some Bali fabric I recognize and it's kind of Cantha Boro stitching with a piece over top. And you can see it's, that's, all all that's all, all tentaculum. tentaculum. And it's nice to see the variation. This piece is my favorite that we've done lately. So Batik Cats. And that is an amazing amount of stitching. Can you see that? Can they see that? Look at this in here. This fabric is Figo, right? Mm -hmm. And then we still have this in a couple of different colors. This pattern is really fun. And that's, again, all tentaculum, just different colors and just following the pattern of the fabric. Using the fabric. And then this was placed on top. Again, with the batiks, all our batik panels, I do a lot of hand stitching with those. You can see several of them in my book, the batik panel book. So, and we do give you some basic stitches there as well. One of the things that I'm working on now, I decided, again, you'll notice the owl. I got this fabulous fabric here, and it's these, um, it seems to be the year of the woodland creatures, because that's what a lot of the patterns on the fabric have been, is woodland creatures. So, 
this comes in a kit. Notice I started small. And it comes with everything, including, you can see that there's some needles there. And this hardware is all here. And what's gonna happen is I'm gonna do all my stitching that I want. I'll probably put a piece here, uh, maybe some turquoise or something. And then these will be my, I'm, I'm upside down, sorry. So these are gonna be my inside pieces, but I will probably ch cover this with Misty Fuse and put a backing of teal or turquoise or orange. But I've been having a whole lot of fun. So there's some rickrack. I have um, some size 12 to size three in variations, and, and that's about as far as I've gotten. This is the, um, um, ba -ba 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 -ba. ribbon floss so I stitched it and pulled it and it made a little bow so that is there all right we are um, running out of time here so let me guess get, show you the rest of our examples again Chris we had a row by row that was using this ruler and of course Chris took it be above and beyond using some batiks and some great colors there. And then these two pieces I absolutely adore. If you, this is, um, whose fabric is Denise Burkett. Denise Burkett, another Aussie. And so these are hand stitched here, beautiful piece of wool, as well as machine stitched on the back. This piece is echoing the fabric and then working with the wool. So you kind of can get an idea combining your cottons and your wools and your threads all, all together. And I love this kind of layering from one quilt on top of the next. I use that a lot, and that is a great way to add some depth, some complex cloth. Um, some other books, you know my favorite. I This one is my next one I like. Of course, this one is my first one I like. But there's always, um, there's some little handbooks here. Christian Brown's written several, several books. This one is a new one that talks about contemporary embroidery. With COVID, there's lots of hand stitching going on. So there's lots and lots of different kinds of books. What we'd like to do is invite you to post some of your hand stitching on Artistic Artifacts Creative Minds. So this is a private group that you can ask to be part of, and we would love for you to do that. And we want to see what you're doing and what you're creating and experiencing with your products that you've purchased from Artistic Artifacts. And today would be fabulously perfect if you could post some hand-stitched items and let us see what it is. So um, if you're already approved, great, go ahead and post. If you want to be part of it, which we would love to have you be part of it, submit and we'll, we'll get you approved on that. So any last questions? Nope, everybody's good. All riled up to start hand stitching. And it's all great. Use what you have and stitch. It's a very comforting feeling. Um, I will be taking part of a panel discussion on Tuesday night with um, Alexandria Library. There'll be a link on our Facebook page if you're interested in joining. Watch us on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, shop online anytime. Sign up for our newsletter. We spend, uh, Sharon does a great job of giving information as well as selling you things. And we'd like you to be part of our community. So thanks for joining us today. Have a great day.